Welcome back to The Nest, everyone. This week, we're going to be talking landing gear. Uh, today, we successfully drop tested our main landing gear design uh, to meet FAR Part 23 standards. We are very pleased that it uh, came through with flying colors. So we'll be showing some video of that and talking about it. And after that, I've got an installment of Algie Yates building his youngster uh, in the UK. Uh, he's got some rib construction he wants to show. Uh, I'm going to be posting another Algae Yates as a separate video shortly and uh, we got to get caught up on uh, with him. He's getting way ahead of us. So here we go. This is Fisher Flying Products. I'm Dave Hartner. Welcome to The Nest. Our video newsletters provide weekly insight into building and flying our 15 wooden aircraft designs. Polini Motori of Italy is a gracious sponsor of our channel. Polini is the manufacturer of the Thor 303DS. Cozy Carb Ice Prevention Systems is a proud sponsor of this channel as well. Please take the time to watch our videos to the end as this assists us in the metrics that YouTube uses to rate our channel. Hit the like button if you feel that the content is worthy. We invite you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hitting the bell so that you are notified whenever we post our newsletters. In this slow motion video, you'll see the test rig that we have set up for our larger um, aircraft like the Dakota Hawk. Uh, we built a test rig that has two 55 gallon drums uh, partially filled with water. We filled them all the way up for doing the static test, but we partially filled them uh, for a full test rig weight of 903 pounds for this drop. Uh, this drop was from 16 inches and 5 eighths and we had 25 PSI in the tires. And as you can see, we had quite a successful drop. We had plastic under the tires to allow them to slide laterally, and we found that uh, we didn't bend anything, uh, and uh, that we had a really good rebound of about eight and a half inches. Um, but then the second one was only an inch, so we don't have a lot of cycling rebound. Um, we, we, we looked everything all over after the fact and found that we had no damage whatsoever, and then everything sprung back to the proper positions uh, for the long term. So we found that this was a very successful test. Here's Algi. Hi, and welcome to this week's video. Uh, in this video, you see uh, the manufacture of ribs, and I show you some details of some of the specialist ribs. Not all of them, because I've yet to sort out uh, two of the specialist ribs for the upper wing. One I need fuel tanks for and one I need to have the upper rear spar fabricated to carry out. They're not on the drawings. The drawings give you details of the standard rib but it doesn't really tell you about the others so if you build all your ribs the same you could end up being caught out by having to chop out great chunks of geodetic and glue in other chunks of geodetic to get it to work out. But hey ho! Uh, Let's see uh, what I'm going to show you this week. Come on then. Right, as you can see, just put the, uh, the lower capping piece in. Both of them uh, have been uh, bent with my uh, using boiling water, putting it into the form and letting it dry for effectively 24 hours. This one I've put in slightly uh, forward, uh, more forward than it needs to be, but it's the way I've, uh, I set up the jig was to for the, the, the steaming is to allow for that and then I lay in this one I'll bring you around and give you a bit of a close-up of what I'm going to do at this end here now with uh, with the two pieces in position holding this against the uh, the jig sides I'm just using the razor saw straight down either side of the upper capping piece so I'm cutting the lower one as soon as it slides like that you know that you've actually cut that little piece off that's through and we are ready you can sort of see nice close fit there you can move that back just a little piece like that that makes it a good tight fit and I've found that doing it like that means that this is very very consistent from one rib to the other when I cut off the excess here 
they're spot on. Right, I'll mix up some resin and uh, I'll go into a bit of time lapse for you to uh, see what I get up to. Okay, so I've mixed up uh, four grams of resin to 3.32 grams of hardener. Just make sure it's well and truly mixed. Small quantities are quite hard to get mixed and are far more critical. This is enough for me to do one rib and one half rib. I've got a couple of sticks and bits and pieces here which I've cut slightly short. And I start off uh, by, uh, by, by working my way from the, uh, the back edge here. One rib done and dusted, uh, ready to be put to one side to cure. 
clamps are in, accessories wipes off the uh, the top faces. You saw that I used a little stick to go underneath to clean out the, the bit underneath. Uh, so I'll now use the rest of the resin which I've got there uh, to do a front half rib. The time taken so far to create this rib has been just on 20 minutes, just under 20 minutes actually, uh, from the time we started building it. So enough work time with the resin to do another uh, 10 minutes or so on a half rib. 45 minute work time but I don't like doing it more than 30 minutes. It's the, the resin starts getting a little bit sort of thick and you know, it starts, starts to cure a little bit. So I don't want to go more than that. So two batches of resin for me means I can make up two full ribs and two half ribs. Okay, so let's see how we get on. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw straight line across on my data marks uh, so I know where to cut the, uh, the tail section off and we'll get rid of our clamps just get rid of my locating pins get rid of these little clips That's that done. Just easing these these out. Sometimes it's a little bit tight. It's a little bit tight. Just using a chisel, just. To upside down I can ease things a little bit easier there's one got the marks on there which are taking it off the jig there's a little bit of uh, glue squeeze out and things I'll show you how I deal with that in a sec so just with a razor saw Cuts. So it's very slightly proud. Just with a sanding block. So that's in line. Uh, same with all, all the other bits except of course this end here. I can just uh, do it left handed so you can see. Just cut the tip off there. You can sort of see the end of the sort of ply just at the end. That's uh, all waste now. And then, as you will see, there is a little bit of, uh, sort of resin which is sort of squeezed out on the other side. It hasn't made the contact area, a slight staining there, so it's just made it. So I can, well, I, what I tend to do there, I'm just going to look. A small block, uh, some 120 grit on it, 
like in there. Just get rid of anything off the surface there, and then where it's got a little bit extra there, just go in, take off the bits where there's uh, a bit of resin that's not where I want it to be. Which is pretty much if I can see it, it's not where I want it to be. Squeeze out there. All the excess resin take off, a little bit of staining, but it doesn't make any difference. That's all that one's now ready to go. And I'll go through all the others the same way. Okay, so a couple of differences on the root ribs. Uh, the root ribs, as you can sort of you won't be able to tell, but this rear vertical section here is packed forward uh, on the jig with a sixteenth of an inch uh, piece of ply to just bring it for that sixteenth of an inch to cope with the uh, gusset plate on the root of the rear spar um, and it's been dressed away to allow for the strap to go through and a bit of clearance around the strap you don't want this rubbing on the strap otherwise it's going to be you know produce a chafe mark on a, on a, a structural strength piece so uh, uh, I've just made that wider than the, uh, the strap by a section and deeper so it's about 3 sixteenths to allow for the eighth inch there and then uh, at the front here it's been dressed back so this is the lower root uh, rib the uh, upper root rib similarly dressed out here for the uh, tang to go through again the back end here this vertical has been moved forward a sixteenth of an inch and again we've got the slot in it but this section here is removed because we've got the uh, the bow going across there and that reduces our requirement uh, somewhat for there so here's one of the uh, other wacky ribs uh, this one is uh, the sixth one out on the lower wing and uh, I put a piece of uh, rib cap piece along the front edge here because you take out uh, 5 sixteenths is what I've taken out from this vertical piece here so it would be rather fragile and, and chance of breaking I mean, it really leaves about a sixteenth of an inch there so I'll put this, this cap piece in to give it just a little bit of reinforcement there so it can't crush or anything else during the actual assembly. All the ribs at this moment in time haven't got the T piece which uh, goes across the back face here of this, uh, this, little, uh, this piece here. Uh, I'll fit all those uh, later on. Just going to block in this bit varnished in here that's had three coats of varnish I then sanded the surface flat so there's no varnish on the surface actually talking about making sure the surface is, is correct I and mean, that's sanded with uh, 80 grit with an, uh, 80 grit sandpaper and uh, then it's been blown clean then it's been wiped with alcohol uh, wipe and uh, wire brushed with a stainless steel fine wire brush to make sure that the surface is absolutely clear of debris from the sanding process at least to the best of my ability uh, but it brings up the question that was asked a couple of videos back now I think uh, somebody asked me can you bond directly on top of uh, old T88 i.e. if you've uh, you know, glued something together and you've got T88 on the surface could you put glue could you put the, the T88 directly on top of that my answer to that question is well from my tests T88 is one of the best epoxy resins I've come across for being able to bond to itself with an unprepared surface but I wouldn't. Uh, 
Yeah, I, from my normal aircraft test pieces, I've had, uh, you know, which I, I did some experiments. There's a, a bit of a video uh, going going back some uh, where where I show you how I test all my structural bits. I'll make up a, a little test piece for this, for example, just to make sure that the resin is up to its strength. Um, I had a couple of failures with uh, T88 straight on top of raw T88. Um, the recommendation is always to try and make the surface uh, clear of uh, previous cured resins, especially with epoxies because they generally produce like an oily film, um, a sort of waxy film on the surface, uh, which isn't good for uh, for bonding to. Um, this, you know, despite T88 being good uh, for any primary structure, I wouldn't. Uh, I, uh, I'm a great believer in uh, following the guidelines when it comes to construction. Anyway, oh, carrying on with this, I'm just see I sort of put on a little bit of excess amount of resin. I scrape off. some and just make sure that I've got a really good coating. The reason I put a little bit of excess on is I want to make sure that I've got resin all the areas I need it to be. Now because this is a closed box and I didn't want to sort of trace out and then varnish and, and all the other bits and pieces that would be involved with that. The lid here on the top of the box I have uh, given a complete coat of resin, so that's got a full coat of resin on it to seal the whole thing up. Now, this is where a lot of people would uh, go for the staple gun, and I must admit. I do use staples occasionally, but I don't like using staples on primary structure. I don't like using staples, I can get away without it anyway. Um, but all I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some tape across. Let it walk its way in, it says. Some weights. I want that to go across there. Across there. I'll put a couple of corner weights on. Then, as is my usual thing, I'll try to get rid of as much of the excess resin as I can. So, that really is the only different area compared to the lower spar. That's a complete box with my modification there of the vertical. I've started laying out the uh, upper rear spar. And I'll show you that in more detail in next week's video, no doubt. Thanks again for watching. We try hard to bring you interesting content each week. To help us out, please like and share our videos if you feel the content is worthy. To receive the latest info from Fisher Flying Products, click the subscribe button and ring the bell. See you next time in the nest.